so you tighten that up and then this is just a follow-up visit to check that charge I just turned it on so we are going to let her run for a few minutes let the pressure stabilize it's about 75 in the house it's 82 outside so I'm hoping everything is going to be all good with this um, if I'm not mistaken we did the coil and the TXV when that happened so the coil should be good I would think anyway that's what we're here to confirm some temperature clamps on it there was a couple of things I was going to take kind of take advantage of this opportunity a couple of tips and a couple of things that I do sometimes when I'm troubleshooting a unit uh, more or less a reversing valve problem there's nothing wrong with this reversing valve it was just something that kind of popped into my mind and thought I would cover it stabilize out but these reversing valves better these reversing valves in here have metal end plates on this cylinder that shifts in here and I keep got more I just keep two well rare earth magnets a medium size one of two little ones But I stick these magnets on here. You're gonna find these end plates right there. When you de-energize this, now I haven't tried this, I got this tip from somebody else um, that kind of comes and does some training with our technicians uh, every year or so. Uh, for three or four days, real smart guy. I'm gonna say his name, but uh, he mentioned using the rare earth magnets. And to see if your reversing valve is actually in a full shift. If it's not, these magnets will be more in here, kind of like like that. Kind of each end of the cylinder, if it's stuck in the middle. Um, right here is the ends. I'm not sure whether this magnet will be a little stronger. Yeah, that one will stick a little stronger. So we'll do that one. These little ones will probably work as well. But if it shifts, I don't want it to lose contact in the magnet fall. These are a little stronger. So those are your end plates on your reversing valve. You're in cooling mode. So we're going through your suction, back to your true suction. So I'm gonna try shifting this thing in a minute. Just try this little trick out see if those magnets will shift. So let's try and see what happens when I shift this thing to heat. There you go. You see them shift? Now they're on the other end. So you can use those magnets on your reversing valve. See them move back when it shifted? So there you go. It does work. If it's in a mid-shift or not making a full shift, they wouldn't go as far. It wouldn't go all the way to the end like it did. It would maybe stop right in the middle, which means if you're not making a full shift, everything in here is not lined up. Right now, this is our discharge coming through here. This is our true suction coming through this valve. So our discharge is coming off our compressor and then going through this coil. Air flow through the coil from the hot gas to the liquid and then back into the system. Our true suction obviously is going to come through here off our evaporator coil so if any of this gets out of line you start bleeding your hot gas back over and those are situations where you see you hook up to it and you don't know is it my compressor my reversing valve is everything is it stuck in mid shift is my reversing valve bleeding over stabilizing my pressures or is it the compressor compressor may be pulling two or three amps running a 
185 over a 230. Uh, you're bleeding your high pressure, back, high pressure back over to your low pressure through the reversing valve because your reversing valve is leaking, sticking in mid shift. That's all I'll show you how you can check to see if it makes a full shift. But, um, or is it the compressor just not pumping refrigerant? It's on, it's pulling an amp draw, but it's not moving anything. Typically, if the compressor is not moving anything, the pressures are going to stabilize out pretty equally. And because there's no refrigerant moving through the system, all your line temperatures are going to be the same. They're going to be the exact same temperature pretty much. There's no refrigerants moving. If you've got this thing bleeding here, then you're going to get, you know, obviously an offset of pressures, but they'll be close to stabilized, but not completely stabilized. And you'll get a difference in some of your line temperatures, maybe 88, uh, 78, uh, 80, uh, 68. So you, if you've got temperature changes, you've got some refrigerant moving. But this is an easy way to test your reversing valve to see if it's making a full shift. Just put those magnets on the end plates and then check your valve. Energize it and de-energize it. Boom. So those magnets, they follow the ends of the followed the ends of the reversing valve. Followed it back to the other end when we energized it back. So thought that was a thought that was I wanted to try it. Figured I'd try it for the first time on here. And uh have a dag on if it don't work. So never thought about that. There may be some guys that do do that and have thought about it. It's just the first I've heard of it. But uh anyway I keep these little magnets stuck on the bottom of my tray to keep some extra screws in it and then I keep these other smaller magnets and let's try it with those real quick just out of curiosity to see if those will follow it these you can get it they come in like a little pill bottle you can get them at Harbor Freight for about eight or nine dollars there's ten ten of them in there we'll see how strong they are when we do this yep They'll follow it too. There we go. There you go. So, yep, get you some of these little rare earth magnets. Good little trick to try to troubleshoot on a, a reversing valve. Right now, our pressures are looking okay. I've shifted it a couple of times now, so I need to let it stabilize. But another little thing I saw. Everybody uses those thermal imagers. Um, I bought one just for the point of sealing registers off the back side of attics and upstairs units. You saw that other video. Being able to look up there and see the temperature change around that register, the sheetrock being hot, sweating, dealing with stuff like that. <coughs> I kind of like the idea of using it to check the refrigerant circuit so you look at this condenser coil up and down how well you can see it if you had restricted areas in this coil drastic temperature changes and it is that going to show or if you want to check across your refrigerant lines that one's 48 degrees that one's let it recalibrate that one's 98 90 or 88 90 degrees but filter dry so if you wanted to check to see if a filter dry was restricted you could go across that filter dryer and check your temperature difference so at the top of this one we're getting about 85 degrees and the dryer itself go across that and then we get down to the bottom of that filter dryer and check so now yeah, we're 89 degrees there we let it calibrate a minute we're 89 87 there go to the top we're 80 let it recalibrate so this is something you have to practice at a little bit, I think. So we're at 89 at the bottom. We're at 89 at the top right there right now. 89 degrees, 88. 
checking restrictions in coils, like an evaporator coil. If you wanted to go look at an evaporator coil, you know, if the coil is restricted and you've got a circuit in that, in that evaporator coil, uh, not getting any refrigerant, obviously, the circuit of that coil, it's not getting refrigerant, it's going to be much warmer than the circuits in that coil that are getting refrigerant. So you can go in there and check that and check for refrigerant restrictions based on just your color pattern, your hot, the purple is the colder, yellow is the hottest on this. But you can go through there, you can check motor temperatures. So if I wanted to look at that condenser fan motor right there, it's running about 105 degrees on that condenser fan motor. I don't know how well you can see this, but I got this one, the little Klein Tools Thermal Imager, that for $269. Um, but looking at the house, like in the, in the wintertime, you can show the homeowner where they're gaining heat around their windows and their doors, things like that. But I thought using it to check refrigerant issues it was a pretty smart idea because you can go around there and check like i said you have a drastic temperature change across your filter dryer check for restricted circuits and condenser coils and evaporator coils um, so just some new tips i picked up on so i'm checking the charge on this thing and it's looking looking pretty good i don't think there's any need to go get in the attic for anything um you know, we're running a seven and a half sub cool to sub cool on this unit's eight 13 super heat so he did say he tightened that fitting and uh everything seems to be running okay but those were some quick tips i thought i would throw out there using magnets to check the shift on the reversing valve using a thermal imager to look for restrictions in your refrigerant circuit whether it's in the indoor or outdoor coil across the filter dryer itself um, i use it like i said to check supply registers on upstairs units around the ceiling looking for air leakage around windows um, doors things like that just to kind of let the homeowner a little little added information for what we do I mean, the house is part of the system as well, if you think about it. So you can sell somebody a really efficient system for a whole lot of money, but it's not going to work out all that great for them if they don't make some upgrades in some older houses, more insulation, show them the attic, take that thermal imager, you can show them the ceiling upstairs, how hot the sheetrock is, they need to upgrade their insulation, show them their windows, you need to uh, get your windows upgraded, maybe sealed, something keep that keep that out that outside air outside where it belongs <coughs> so just a little extra tool i've added to my bag to you know provide the homeowner a little bit more information than, than just yeah your refrigerant charge is good uh yeah your charge is good but you got five windows that are leaking a lot of air back into the house when that blower is running it's sucking that hot humid air into your house uh, you need to upgrade your insulation in your attic your sheetrock on your ceiling is really hot uh, the supply registers in the ceiling on an upstairs system coming down from the attic. Uh, you've got, you got 52 degree air with that thermal imager to show that cold register blowing that air. If you go two inches past the register and yeah, your sheet rocks 88 degrees. If you've got any cold air bleeding through there, you're going to get some condensate. You're going to get some sweating, some sheet rock soggy, some mildew, things like that. So it's just an extra, extra thing to add give the homeowner some information while you're out there but anyway guys this is pretty much winding this one up charge on this one's good i think we're gonna be okay i'm gonna let this one ride but uh, anyway guys like subscribe appreciate you watching and uh the hot weather is coming so we are all about to get very very busy in the next two or three weeks if you're not already busy anyway guys have a good one